Let's turn now to our market panel. It was a mixed session as this crucial week gets underway with Fed decision coming in less than 48 hours. But joining us now is David Bonson of the Bonson Group. It's kind of incredible. The S&P basically closed flat, 44.53. So we'll call this a middling market. For that reason, David, I'm going to start with this Instacart IPO. What does it signal about the capital markets? And are you going to be watching this? Is this something you would potentially invest in? No, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, and that doesn't mean it doesn't go up on first day, and it doesn't even mean it won't go up a year down the line. It just means that these companies going public at significantly lower valuations in the last private rounds, this was unheard of when I was growing up in the business, and having it happen all the time now, it's become like expected, and you have really significant companies, name brand companies, Uber and Lyft are great examples from pre-COVID era going public that are still today trading at a significantly lower valuation than their last pre-IPO fundraising. Instacart, unfortunately, is in that same category. Uh, we just don't think that uh, it's the same IPO market of the 1990s. The money is being paid to founders. It is not being paid to investors in a public round. So, so interesting. You don't think that at a $9 billion plus valuation versus the $30 billion plus valuation two years ago that the, the market's correcting itself here with some of these IPOs like an Instacart? Well, I certainly acknowledge nine is a better number than 30, but I would use WeWork as an example. They were raising at a 44 valuation, trying to get 55, and it looks like the company might be worth zero and ultimately came all the way down below a billion. At some point, even nine can be too expensive for an unprofitable company with a very difficult business model trying to deliver packages this way. It's been really tough. The whole world was shut down and DoorDash wasn't able to make money. I mean, it's just, a, it's a tough business. So without getting into the details of their offering, I still think $9 billion sounds like a rich valuation over time without a refined business model. Okay. And of course, it's $9 billion versus, I should correct myself, $39 billion two years yeah, ago. Right. Uh, David, you said you wouldn't touch Instacart with a 10-foot pole. What would you buy right now? Well, we're dividend growth investors, and so we are perpetually limited to finding companies that we think are growing free cash flow. There's uh, a lot of great companies doing such, and some that we don't think are really all that dramatically overpriced. And energy is an overweight for us, but it's driven by bottom-up company selection. I would add, too, the only utility name we own is American Electric Power, but utilities have been quite significantly uh, sold off, and consumer staples have pockets of value, too. We've just added to General Mills. Uh, we love some of the asset managers, Blackstone and Apollo and uh, uh, Blue Owl are, are companies that we like quite a bit. So there are opportunities where there's long-term defensible business models growing free cash flow, and you want that balance sheet strength. In, in a, a position like this where there is a lot of question marks about what the Fed will do, what the economy is doing, we don't want our entire investment thesis dependent on P.E. expansion. And, and we think that, that dividend growth provides investors a better way to do that. Yeah, of course, we'll be focused on the Fed this week, but also the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan with some key rate decisions uh, out of those countries as well. Gentlemen, thanks for kicking off the hour with me, David Bonson.